Okay, this um, recording I'm doing for you is to show you how to make a clipping mask. Um, so this is Adobe Illustrator and we're doing how to use the clipping mask function with text. Um, it's a really simple thing that you can do but actually um, it's quite effective as a technique. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get an image, um, a textural background that you're going to place that's going to be the image that you're going to clip inside the text. So I've got one to say, so I'm going to go to File, Place, and you must always place your images in. If you drag your image in, it will not work. So that's really important that you follow these properly, these steps. So place the image in from the desktop, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it to make it a bit bigger, um, like so, so it's nice and big on the background. I know it's a bit blurry, but we don't, we're not going to worry about that so much for now. Uh, when you've got something selected, if you want to deselect it, just click on a bit of space on the on the desktop there. Um, and you can see that I'm using my black arrow, my black selection tool there to, to um, do all of the clicking and manoeuvring. I'm then going to, oh no, once I've done that, I'm then going to write something on my, uh, in to on top of my background like so. As you can see, I've already got um, this font selected, but if you wanted to see what font you want to use, because um, in here it's just got the names, if you go into window, and then you scroll down to type uh, and open the character palette you when you have the drop down men manager uh, menu the font menu in the character palette you can actually see what the fonts look like and i've chosen rockwell extra bold because it is quite a nice strong bold font uh, which will work quite well for this type of thing um, and you can see that i've chosen it to be 100 points to make it nice and big so that you can see Incidentally, if you want to move this palette around at any point, if you just click on the top, the black um, uh, dark section, you can just move that around. So I'm just going to, with my type tool selected, write the word hello, I think it's going to be. Um, and once I've uh, selected it again with by clicking onto the black arrow, I can in fact change the size of that. So I'm going to drag it out even bigger to make it nice and big, filling the page like this. And once you've done that, you need to basically um, outline this font. At the minute, it's still a workable font, so I can carry on typing. I can change that word if ever I want to, but we, we, we need to change that font so that it becomes an actual shape. Uh, in order to do that, we need to tell the um, object to become a flattened object. So we are going into the object palette, go down to flatten transparency, and if we click on that box there, which won't be selected on yours, but is on mine, because I've just had a practice, click on that, convert all text to outlines. Um, these these will be fine. And then click on OK. And it now has become an outlined shape. So each one of these letters is now an actual shape, as if we drawn them um, with the pen tool, rather than being a workable font. So it's important that you make sure that you check before you do it, if you've got your spelling right. And then I've just deselected that by clicking on the background again, and I'm going to drag, click and hold. So I'm clicking and holding and dragging over the two, and then releasing, and that will um, select both the background and the foreground. Another way to do that is to click on one, hold down the shift key, and click on the other one if you don't like to drag. And once you've done that, you go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make... Um, and the actual clipping mask is this shape here. So you're telling the computer that you want to clip out this area so that only that area is showing the pattern underneath. So that's why it's important that the um, area that you want to clip with is on top. All the information from the rest of this um, image that we had in the background is still there though. The computer can still retain that information. So basically that's still kind of here it's just not um, within that section anymore and it's been clipped off. But we can go back and undo that. So if we go to Object, Clipping Mask, Release, we can let that go and we can see we get the pattern back. So at any time, if you wanted to do that to get the pattern back or undo what you've done, you can just release it. The next thing I'm going to show you is just with the white arrow, you can go along and if you hold down the shift, hang on, let me explain that a bit further. If you click on the very outline of the object, which you can't see, but you just need to click right on the very edge, it will select the shape again. And if you hold shift and keep going along, 
and you can tell it's been selected because it's got these little white points are coming up. Um, select all the objects and then what you can do after that is to add a little outline and you'll find that these two boxes down here um, equate to both the fill there and the stroke which is what we call the outline of an object and if you click between the two you can toggle them so you can get to each one obviously we don't want to fill it because it's already filled we want to actually go back around the outside and maybe add a little stroke there so the color has already been chosen down here but if I wanted to choose it either there or here I can pick a color perhaps let's go for a dark green um, and you might not be able to see it because it's quite a small stroke at the moment that I've just actually added an outline what I can do is go to the stroke menu here and you can see the menu the weight of the stroke and I can change that if I want to something like five and then all of a sudden it becomes a bit bolder so there you go that's a very very simple way of adding a texture or say a photograph background that you may have taken or something that you've scanned into a, a font and that can look quite effective on your posters or on your CD packaging or whatever else. And that concludes the end of this tutorial.